Okay, so yeah, the university is over there, so I can probably just get rid of that. Is one of them the toe? I bet one of them the toe. Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> to be fair, uh, I don't put my blood sugar monitor back in my day bag and should really monitor it more closely. Yeah, that would be a good idea. But either way, Sam, I hope you feel a lot better soon. You're smart. Of course you are. I only attract smart people on this stream. A stream of this quality only attracts smart people. Okay, I guess we go in here. Maybe. Not. I think it's closed. We'll come Oh, hi. Do you always stand in the rain reading books? Wendell sent you to deliver me the books, right? Um, no. No, you must have me confused with someone else. Oh, excuse me. I'm just worried for the fate of these tomes. It's been a week without news from Wendell. Maybe you can help me. I I'd reward you, of course. Of course you would. Felt like hypoglycemia, but should, uh, but couldn't check. Ugh. You should get a blood sugar dog. That way you always have an excuse to have a dog near you. <laughs> Did they make those? Why not? What can I do? Oh, marvellous. Let's get acquainted then. Samuel Hopes, honorary member of Altera Pa's book club. Charles Reed, private eye. Good, good. Listen, we're missing three rare books. One was taken for restoration while the other two were being studied. I asked Windle to contact all parties, but he's gone quiet. Here's our records. Did he Please have his lips stitched together as well, like that woman at the library? They're so very valuable. Why are they so valuable? They're the third, seventh, and ninth tomes written by the humble servant. The collection of all eleven books is our most prized possession. The author's real name is a mystery, but we know that he was an Oakmonter for sure. Oh, of course he was. Okay. I'm on it. Bye. Oh, we just picked up random side quest there. What is here? Locked door. Yes, diabetes assistance dogs are a real thing. Really? <laughs> yeah, so valuable uh, that can stop the rain. I guess I know the name. <laughs> mm hmm. Nothing can stop the rain. So, uh, there are no other buildings to go into apart from this one. Maybe I should actually speak to the guy at the door. Hi. Welcome nerd? To, to the University of Oakmont. How can I help you? Oh my god, this guy's like Rusty Venture from the Venture Brothers. It's like an older, more, well, an older and equally nervous version. You recognize this bottle? You know where it comes from? Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> We have hundreds of b bottles like this in the university. Uh, fine. I need to know what's in it. Any suggestions? Ah, uh, you need an, an analysis. Well, I'm sure someone from the Department of Medicine c c can help there. I'm looking for Professor Westerbrook. You know where I can find him? You're, you're, you're the one bringing him the sp specimen? Uh, specimen? Oh, oh n n never mind. Uh, uh, he he's in the de Department of Medicine. Let, let, let me show you. You have a good day. G g goodbye, sir. They can smell chemicals in breath before low and high blood sugar events. Wow, it's pretty cool. All right, Department of Medicine. It's over here. I guess there's a side door then? Let's go have a look. Is 
Oh yeah, white coats. These are the doctors. They're smoking, but you know, they're doctors. Hi there. Hello, sir. Welcome to Oldmont University Department of Medicine. I'm Samuel. Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. I have a few questions if you don't mind. You recognize this bottle? Maybe you could tell me what's inside. Hmm. That's one of our lab bottles. We have a lot of them. As for what's inside, I'd need to run some tests. Yeah, could you do that for me? These tests aren't cheap. And the other day I could get right to it, but we're, uh, somewhat hindered right now. What's up? Our lab is crawling with, well, creatures. Professor Westerbrook's research is a little unconventional, and something went wrong. Really wrong. Of course it did. So, if I do a little pest control for you, you'll run those tests for me. For free? Our budget is tight. You'd be helping the cause of science, Mr. Reed. Isn't that enough? Oh, I guess science could help itself. Hmm, right. maybe you can science your way out of your yes. problem. You solve our problem, and I'll run the test for you. Off the books. Here's the key for the basic. There's a smart lad. Hey, look, it's one of the Throgmortons. Interesting. EOD is banned. To all staff and students at the University of Oakmont, henceforth, any mention of everyone's obvious duty organization, also known as EOD, its symbolics, uh, current and past and or past members, as well as the spouse and their beliefs, is forbidden on university grounds on pain of dismissal and or expulsion. The administration has received numerous reports of EOD activity and outreach uh, disguised as so-called charity work through our university and all over Oakmont. This dangerous activity has reached epidemic proportions and cannot be tolerated. Administration of the Board Trustees. Interesting. The door won't budge. Let me in. Okay, that didn't work. I'm all out of ideas. Oh. Well, that one opened. Let's have a look around, see if there's any ammo I can uh, scrounge up besides those bullets. Ooh, more ammo. Can't make any more bullets. Okay. Make a couple of medical kits. Gotcha. Yes, I will choose this. Oh, yes. Come on. The lab is clear. Cool. Can't carry any more ammo. Maybe I should reload. Well, that sucks. Do I have a skill point? No. I'm glad this thing is dead. Why do they even keep it here? Yeah, oh god, oh. Ah. Experiment log part two, March the 10th. With those pesky limitations removed, I can finally continue my experiments unhindered. I need to know more. The specimen remains alive even with half its internal organs removed. It's fascinating. I'm on the verge of a breakthrough in biology as we know it, March 15th. I developed a way to reanimate their tissue, even in one that's been dead for weeks. This is monumental, the possibilities of it, the implications. Does this hint at something hidden, some other trait uh, present inside other creatures, and perhaps even in ourselves? I will need to find volunteers. See, this type of shit is why we needed ethics in scientific research. 
What kind of person would even touch this? Not to mention dissect it. This is part one. Second of March, I finally received living specimens. Sadly, it's only the smallest ones. The grunts call it Mr. Handsome, but I think it needs a proper name. March the 3rd. Uh, was thinking on the name for the specimen all night, because that was more important than actually doing science. I began a series of experiments on the creature. So far, it has proven exceptionally resistant to all the poisonous substances at my disposal, as well as acid and electrocution. Its shrieking, though, is bound to haunt me. March the 5th. Last night I had a vision. Thousands of hands wrapped around me as a blanket, and I heard the name inside my head. Stygian Harvester. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I'll be pressing that big red button. But it's a big red button. Oh, we have to press the big red button, you guys. I wonder what would happen if I press this button. Should I or shouldn't I? So very tempting. Hmm. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, the basement is not clear anymore, guys. Oh god, get away from me. No, 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 no. It's also that antipsychotic needs to be taken now. Oh. Oh. Big ugly beast. Oh, it's legs twitching. Ah, oh, it's legs twitching. Ah. Oh. What is this? Some serious equipment they've got here. Oakmont University is clearly well funded. Yeah. Ugh. All right, well, I think we got everything. Let's check the case book. So we still need to figure that out. We're currently investigating that. Um, asked me to clear out the beasties. We got the key, the OD is banned. I cleared the monsters from the department medical lab. Okay, cool, nothing new. Yeah, I realize now that was actually first aid. All done. I've cleared the lab. Your lab is certified. And somehow I ended up back on the other side of the uh, counter. But... Reed. You've done us a great favor. Now we can get things up and running again. Okay, so your turn. Okay. I've done my part. Here's the bottle. Now you run those tests. Uh, yes. Wait here. It shouldn't take long. We finished that analysis, sir. It's Sixteen hours well, later. It's ricin. Ricin? Ricin! A highly toxic poison Ooh. extracted from castor beans. It's slow-acting, but absolutely fatal to humans. Mmm. So there's another one. So, where do you get ricin? This isn't something you can pick up from a drugstore. Ah, uh, about that. It is rare, but we have a certain amount of it here. For study, in our poison store. Or we did. Mm. I'm afraid that must be where it came from. The label had been tampered with, but it certainly looks like ours. 
Where did you find it? Uh, crime scene. Someone was trying to poison <clears throat> a bunch of fish with it. This is horrible. I need to warn everyone in the university about this. Who's got access to where the poison's stored? Only Professor Westerbrook has the key. His office is upstairs, right alongside Professor Cavendish's. Professor Westerbrook's not here, though. He's been sick for the last few days. Professor Cavendish is away. Does he have rice in poisoning? Where do they live? Did he eat fish last I'm night? I'm not sure, but probably somewhere in Advent. Most of the teaching staff live there. Wait, you don't think he was one of them? I'm working on that. Can you let me upstairs? I... well... All right. Correct this answer. This is serious. It is. I'll help you. Good. Here's the key. But please don't disturb the professor's things. Wouldn't dream of it. Tell me about these people. I'd like to know a bit more about your professors. What do you want to know? Everything. I want to know more about Westerbrook. He's the head of our department. He's been here for, well, at least 30 years. He's one of the longest serving staff we have. As you've already seen, he's particularly interested in the wild beast that recently appeared in our city. Yeah, that's quite the unique fauna you have there. I've no idea how he did it, but Mr. Throgmorton's men brought him live specimens for his research. He thinks he's on the verge of a breakthrough in evolutionary theory. A secret that once revealed will benefit all humankind. Uh -huh. Some secrets should stay buried six feet under. You're well, six not dimensions a man of science, under. Are you? It's not about why, it's about what if. What can you tell me about Professor Cavendish? He's one of the most brilliant teachers we have here. A PhD at only 25. Just imagine. His biochemistry studies are second to none. Worthy of a Nobel Prize. If he could complete his work. What's his problem? I don't know. There's some kind of family trouble. It's made him standoffish and irritable. And easily distracted. I hope he gets through whatever he's going through. We need his talent, especially in these dark times. I'll see you later. Hmm. Okay, so... We need to go upstairs and have a look through their shit. And we have Mind Palace. The EOD's ranks are swelling. Probably has nothing to do with any of those. Westerbrook has access to poison. Okay, I don't think any of that sticks together yet. Closed for maintenance. Whose place is that? That's Westerbrook's place. Interesting. Uh, this one is Cavendish. Oh god. Okay. Well, let's have a look around first before we start wondering about that shit. Draft of an article. Brothers and sisters crossed out too familiar. My fellow Americans crossed out they are American or they are Americans too. Uh, citizens of Oakmont, how much longer will we put up with those fish-faced beasts, or oh, bast crossed out, those sea freaks crossed out? <laughs> how much longer will we put up with this, those K-forsaken degenerates who call themselves the EOD crossed out? Cavendish really did not dig the EOD, did he? What is this, a bar of soap? Oh, I've played the escapist, I know what this is. You can make a mold with a bar of soap and a key. And then you need to get a plastic hair comb from another inmate's cell, and you need to be able to warm it up with a lighter to make some soft plastic, and then you work it into the mold, and you make a plastic key. And then you can use it to get out of jail. But we're not playing the escapist today. This should be good enough to make a decent copy. So that must be how we got into the actual uh, 
thingy place. So how did he get the original key? Interesting. Yeah, somehow he got the original key. Alright, Mind Palace stuff. What do we have? Cavendish had a spare key. George Cavendish, a professor at Oakmont University, is the poison thief. He made himself a copy of the key to the poison locker. Oh, that's for the poison locker, not for the uh, warehouse. According to his students, he lives somewhere in Advent. Okay. Okay, that doesn't have anything to do with that. Right, what is this then? Got a strange... Hmm, what is here? From Professor Westerbrook. This is absurd. It's been five months. They still haven't finished repairing my office. I'm done sitting in the corridor like some kind of waiter. I won't step foot into this building again until the works are finished. Or you give me Cavendish's office. You tell that to the board. I'm through with this farce. That's right, you take a stand, Westerbrook. Authorised personnel only. Hmm. Bonk. Here's my authorization. Ugh, let me in. So this is the poison cabinet, These I bet. bottles look exactly the same as the one with the poison. Okay. All evidence collected. I mean, shouldn't I have been able as well to get in there and actually look at his stuff? Because we were interested in him as well, but I guess Cavendish is our man, right? He lives somewhere in Advent, according to, um, according to the students. I don't know why I can't link anything else, though. Surely we haven't got everything yet. And these are the books for the book club. Okay. Hmm. Can you fill me in on... Of course. How can you tell if someone's been poisoned with ricin? The symptoms take several days to develop. At first, it's like a common cold. But over several days, well, it develops into hemorrhage, internal organ failure, and death. It's not a pleasant way to die. There's some kind of cure for ricin? I'm afraid not. Once it's in your system, it's a death sentence. I'll see you later. I what do you- What can you tell- He's one of the most brilliant teachers. His biochemistry- What's it? I don't know. I hope- Okay, I'll see Nothing different there. So how are we gonna find... Westerbrook's, um... Place. We might be able to find at City Hall. There could be a record of him there. We're going the right way? Yes, we are.
Yep, so we want to investigate the Poison Thief George Cavendish Citizens. Records. Occupation. An advent. Hey, there we go. George Walter Cavendish. Born January 26, 1883. Birthplace Oakmont. Place of residence Oakmont. Uh, advent Central... St. Michael's Road between Carpenter Street and Constitution Street, flat 2. Professor of Biology, Department of Medicine, blah 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 blah. Status divorced. Why do I get the feeling that's going to play into it? Alrighty then. Uh, oh. Place on map. So, he lives... Uh, somewhere in this area. St. Michael's Road. St. Michael's Road. Between Carpenter and Constitution. So there's Constitution, and there's Carpenter. So he lives here. Alright. Let's go shoot him in the face. Let this stretch here. Yeah. Find something you like. Cheaper than the rest. What's your problem? Extra, extra. All the news that's written. on here somewhere. That's probably it. Any other buildings we can go into? Nope. Flat number two. The door won't budge. It won't be this bottom floor. It'll be the next floor, probably. If you want it, take it, it's free. No, I think I'll not bother. Well, there we go, that's flat number two. <sighs> the door won't budge. <laughs> Professor? I'm here to kill you, I mean, talk to you. Oh, dude's even got a EOD band. This Cavendish guy did an impressive investigation. And the EOD is in the center of all of it. Hmm, interesting. Do I take a picture of this, maybe? So we've got a newspaper issue for March. Going, going, gone. Body count rises on vanishings continue across Oakmont. Locals are in a panic, with most of the reported disappearances occurring in the Shell Salvation Harbor in Grimhaven Bay. Uh, Captain Caleb Lyons of the Oakmont Police has put out a call for information. Our evidence suggests a link between these disappearances and the charity organization, the EOD, that has recently risen to prominence among the city's poor, said Lyons. Most of the victims seem to have either joined the group or have been a recipient of their alms. We encourage anyone with information to come forward. The Chronicle uh, reminds readers to avoid any suspicious newcomers, especially in Smouthers, and to remain at home during event evening hours. Stay alert! Okay. 